Okay, this is the um, test now of what I did with the small saw cut and a little bit of sanding. And to review, basically you have an Israeli Galil magazine, a Norinko Chinese 223 magazine, or 5.56 as they'd be. I put a box of shells in each one, 20 shots. Um, you have the same locking tabs in the back, same height. What you don't have is the lock-up tab in the very front. Right here, there's about a five millimeter difference of the surface area right here. So when I get home, I'm gonna hit that with a tack and a tack and clean it up. I'm gonna fill in right there, make about a five millimeter ledge. Um, I remove the top of the bent over Galil type front end here and made it more Chinese-like. The rest of it's thick, heavy. I polish this up, took down just a little bit, not much, just a little bit. Didn't even get all the finish off of it. Same thing at the front, narrowed it up a bit. Made them same width as the Chinese. And um, except for that front end, it's gonna be something else. So what I wanna do is I wanna take the Chinese Norinko 556 30 round magazine. And I'll show you what we got here. Oh, we got the safety on. Okay, and uh, just a random 100 yard shoot. And right here, get a box of shells inside the Galil Steel $11 Israeli Military Industries magazine. I think it is. You can see it goes in, it locks up. However, the front is subject to movement. And that's a nose down for any cartridge that I try to ram forward right there. You need to make up for that nine, that five millimeters that's missing. And I'm gonna push forward on this. And this is gonna be the same thing as if I'd put in a steel weld, cleaned it up, had it sitting on the platform that catches it. So keep your eye on the prize, right? Oh, now what's going on here? Let's try it. This um, Galil magazine's got a pretty strong follow-up to it. So I'm applying forward pressure right now to keep it in a nose-up position so that I can get quality feeding, hopefully. Yeah, let's give her a try. $11, slightly modified, and in the field. You can't live more in the field than I do right now. With some sandpaper, a wire saw, and someday a tack weld up there. But in a pinch, a guy could certainly shove forward on this thing and cut something loose. Ain't that sweet? Think of this, you could buy a, a nice little wire feed welder. You could buy one magazine. You could probably buy a um, bunch of sandpaper and a piece of wood you could find, I'm sure somewhere. And a little wire saw with a packet of wire feed for the price of one $185 Norinko magazine. That's without shipping. So, think about it. For the price of two of those magazines, you get 20 of these. And the welder. And the little vise. And the saw. And the sandpaper. And, hopefully, a reliably functioning 35 round magazine might be an improvement over the 30. We'll see. I'll come up with another video when I uh, get this thing welded up and uh, I can slap her in and achieve 100% reliability with a completely full magazine. Y'all have a good day.